Dr. Siva Subramanian, I am a professor in head of the department of mining engineering, Amet University. Um, today's lecture is on uh, disaster management, especially the second unit which talks mostly about the recovery and response of the any disasters. Okay, let us start from the what is the, exactly the disaster cycle. The, the disaster cycle is nothing but response, recovery, redevelopment mitigation plans and preparedness and finally comes back to the disaster where if you attack all these four or five units of this disaster cycle you will be in a position to withstand any disaster reduce any loss of human life or material life see normally disasters have got three parts the first is the pre-impact okay the pre-impact is actually it's not normally it's a man-made uh, uh, impacts. For example, if you are constructing a basement for a car parking without proper pillaring, then that will definitely be very vulnerable for any earthquake disasters. So, the building will collapse. Just to give you an example, in Ahmedabad, uh, when the Buj earthquake has come in 2003, what has happened was two adjacent buildings were constructed one year back, that is on 2002 what happened was during this earthquake one building collapsed another building stood just like that without any damage there may be some cracks but not much of serious damage has occurred actually the reason simple reason is they have loaded actually the overhead tank where the water was stored for both these buildings in one single building this has liquefied the entire building and the one building collapsed so this is a pre-impact study which we need to do it whether are we ready to face the disaster then it goes to the during the disaster sorry during the exact phase of disaster when the phase of disaster all of you will know the cyclone will hit the trees will hit the buildings or even the earthquake will damage the buildings post disaster this is very important and a very interesting factor I would like to give you. Uh, all of you will be very surprised uh, that the disaster, Buj earthquake disaster was not a major earthquake very simply to say it was just uh, maybe uh, something like 6.7 to 7 richer scale with a strong built up like uh, Ahmedabad shouldn't have been spoiled very badly but what has happened it is all spoiled so many losses have occurred they were calculating the loss for one and a half years still it has it has not been completed so the post disaster management and post disaster understanding itself will be a very tough task now let us talk about the basically you know the disaster is not the thing which is uh, you can stop it so we should cultivate the habits how do we cultivate the habits first in western countries especially in united states of america and mainly in the northern america you cannot buy a house without taking a flood insurance so the flood insurance is mandatory so we have to cultivate the habit of taking insurances then we have to strictly adhere to the building norms we cannot just like that say construct a building which is which has got some 10 feet of basement and constructing about 10 floors of uh, building is not acceptable at all okay then this third one is federal interventions the lot of punishments for illegal constructions has to take place otherwise you cannot just let it uh, do it okay very recently uh, 
three years back there was a flood as occurred in Nagapatnam two years back or three years back. Our government has certainly done a very good job of creating lot of shelters near Nagapatnam, Tanjavur and other things. So these are all the basic culture which we have to develop it. Unless we develop this culture, even a money cannot buy any of this disaster reliefs. The next topic which we will be talking, we talked about what is a disaster cycle, what is a culture. Now let us take some solid action plans. This is called disaster reduction plan. The re disaster reduction plan is nothing but or it can be also called as a disaster prevention plan. Mind it, when I use the word prevention doesn't mean that I am not preventing the disaster. I am only to reduce the risk of those disasters, the loss of those disasters. Okay, I am not talking prevention means stopping of the disaster. So the disaster prevention plan has to be totally tested, it has to be planned properly. If it is necessary, you have to use the geospatial technology and create certain kind of roadmaps and even the legal laws has to be abide. Everything has to be in place and create a full-fledged action plan. And that is a must for any disaster recovery and response. Next. What are the various kinds of disaster preventions? When I have to prepare a plan, I need to know what are the various kinds of disaster prevention. Uh, I, there are a lot of things are there, I will give you touch base with only two or three things. Today, in uh, take the case of uh, Chennai, Chennai had about 160 odd lakes, Chengalpat and Chengalpat district had 160 lakes. Now it is hardly in single digit or maybe about 15 lakes are available. So what has happened, because of this no water storage was there the flood water which is coming due to the cyclones or rains could not go to the sea just like that a lot of floods have come in Chennai and which we have faced it about four years back okay when there is a Stani cyclone then there is a uh, another cyclone which has come in there so all these things has created a problem so keep the natural uh, resources intact that is the first prevention act you have to do it if you have to spend money for that plan, you have to do it. Okay. Then the second one is educate the people to construct proper construction. Give a very stringent measures if they violate it. Also, give them the very important disaster tools, disaster prevention tools. What is it actually? I mean, I don't know the many. If you go to the many uh, industries they do the uh, safety tour this is a very important phenomenon in many of the industry they first say where is the fire alarm where to press the fire button everything they do it in perfect manner something similar as a community maybe as a federal government or as a local panchayat you have to educate people they should not become panic if then there is a flood comes People started thinking, oh, I'll not get milk, I'll not get this, I'll not have electricity, I have to store everything. And finally, the chaos has happened and 50% of the people are not getting anything out of it. So, what I mean to say is, the prevention, we have to have certain important parameters. One is keeping the natural resources, educating the people, giving the stringent laws and also there are some rule books to be created for the community such. Okay, the disaster mitigation is normally done by various agency. First is the people themselves, they have to be attracted by this kind of a relief measures. Then the second is the community. The third is the state and the central government. I will be talking about the main three types of uh, mitigation plans. Next slide. Please. Some of the disaster mitigation plans, one of them is let us not pollute so that the greenhouses, greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. Level of greenhouse gases should be reduced to a larger extent. Second is the natural resources which I was talking about, which is about the creating a flood bunds and also the, I have been talking the same thing for the basement should have a sufficient pillars so that 
you will be in a position to withstand the earthquakes. Then the desaltation in the rivers should be a very regular process. See the second one, the first one we talked about the federal, the second one we are talking about the community based disaster reduction preparedness basically. What we are doing in the community level is the community should help each other. If there are low lying areas, the community should make sure some community halls or even the even their regular uh, verandas or even the regular um, schools and other places they should be in a position to help them for the flood victims actually right and second is most important thing is they should not get panic that's a very important thing in the disasters people get panic very very fast so the main role is it is not the dep government department it is not the central government it is only the community will say don't worry we are making arrangements we are getting the funds from the government we are getting alternative arrangement you will get the milk you will get the electricity right just to give you one example of this particular thing in a when the tana cyclone came it took about 3 4 days for us to get the recovery of electricity but what has happened was in chengalpur district four or five districts with two or three substations what they made a arrangement is they diverted the electricity for 6 6 hours in all these five villages so the every day people are asked to say okay you will get electricity between 8 and 2 o'clock do whatever you want to do it within that 6 hours and get ready for your remaining darkness for the day this kind of arrangements can be done only through the local communities the role of community continues okay they have to get medicines from the central government state government hospitals they have to be ready with it actually the local medicine should be available they should make sure the epidemic doesn't happen there they have to quickly clean the things if you wait till the some uh, government uh, servant will come and do it it will take problem at least try to remove the plastics and make sure that the water is not stagnant and the actual mosquitoes and other breeds of uh, insects should not be there actually. After the uh, disaster of uh, earthquake in uh, Ahmedabad, Buj area, many of the northern states, the people started thinking that we should be ready in ourselves, so that they started doing the constructions in a different manner. For example, the people like DLF, or the big companies like Afcons, when they started constructing buildings, they have started taking the measures. What is that measure? A very simple thing. You have to have six into six feet into four feet pillars are required if you are having basement or a ground floor as car parking. Right? So second, they don't keep water tank in the rooftop they don't they they have a, a particular ratio there is a basement should have some 20 feet means they cannot go beyond eight floors these kind of things and many places the row houses in the cities like delhi and even the lucknow the cities are not building the multi-story buildings of 20 stories and 30 stories they make sure that only four stories or five stories are done so the disaster mitigation is properly taken care ok what we talked about was the structural mitigation any structural changes which one would like to do it now we are going to have a non structural which only will cost money for the government that is mainly the water and electricity diversion maybe a temporary shelter and also the cattle maintenance what is the role of community which we have already talked they have to do the communication they have to do the uh, actually the first aid help they have to have a medicines all these things but who are all they is the community means you mean to say there is a some kind of a society yes where you live is may have a welfare society where you are living is having a building societies there may be an agricultural cooperative societies all these societies becomes community and they have to help the people 
this is what is important the community government balancing is an absolute necessary for disaster management next slide we talked about the community we talked about the general federal requirements and federal works of disaster response and recovery now we talk little go down to another level which is called panchayat raj or urban local bodies their job uh, most important thing is when the flood comes there will be heavy traffic chaos they have to manage the traffic jams which cannot be only done by the traffic police the local panchayat raj people or the local city bodies urban bodies have to come in handy and they have to start doing these things actually then most important thing is proper communication needs to be set up they have to properly communicate to these communities they have to properly disperse if there is a lack of medicine in a particular area they have to make sure that they get the medicines in that particular area so they are the local leaders for doing the disaster recovery so their role is not at all undervalued their role is very very important the most important thing is the panic can be reduced only by this panchayat raj people well the next after to the panchayat raj we move into the little more uh, higher level one level up in the map which is called the state disaster management authority in india each and every state has got a state management disaster management authority this authority is the entirely they are the leaders boss managers everything for the entire disaster recovery response they own the entire disaster failures they own the entire disaster success everything is in their hands actually they have to prepare the plan they have to implement it properly they have to make sure that the local bodies are communicated they have to make sure the panchayat raj works are being properly done they have to do the monitoring they have to do the calibration everything they have to do it they have to update their uh, data very frequently and they are the nodal agency for the disaster recovery and response so that their role is the maximum role which is a widespread role and even one corner for example just to give you a very small example two years back there was a nagapatnam cyclone came there tanjavur nagapatnam the disaster management authority did a wonderful job in keeping the shelters ready but what has happened the post disaster they failed very very miserably what has happened no food is available food did not reach properly medicines were not available so the the entire country will blame the state disaster management authority right and they are also to get funds from the various sources they have to make sure the sufficient funds are available they have to request the central government to do the give the funds they have to get the funds from the world banks everything they are the authorities fortunately in the last 10 15 years they have started creating lot of workable plans actually so every state government has got workable plans now available they have a disaster management cell is available if they made a district cells disaster recovery cells so it is all properly planned but still a long way to go to have a total disaster reduction loss reduction the next one which is the last one is the central government central government the main job for them is to allocate the funds they have to allocate the funds in the right time and right way that's all that's all is their main job and what they do is as a part of their auditing they come and do the survey whether if the state government is asking for 1000 crores is it 1000 crores or is it 1200 crores or is it 800 crores they have to allocate the funds properly and disbursement has to be quick and other than that they also do a major role of getting the relief materials transferred from one place to another place for example when the kerala floods floods came even our university people we have sent lot of clothes and other things to the kerala government actually that has to be routed through the central government pool and it goes to the kerala basically so no 
other work is for the central government there is a central disaster management authority is there of course they create some serious geographical maps actually they create a large information systems for all the state departments to utilize it other than this they are also supposed to go to the world bank and multilateral funding to get additional funds for this now we talked about all these disaster management authorities is it enough that central government will give you funds the state government will implement that and take the money and everything but no i'm not going to tell you like this if for example if the road authorities if they delay in recovery of these roads the entire system collapses if the railway people don't repair the railway tracks in time entire system collapses okay so there are many organizations which will come into the picture starting from human resources to the industries to the steel and mines if the railway is not railway is not for properly functioning post disaster the coal will not come the coal if it doesn't come the electricity will not be produced if electricity is not there department of electricity cannot produce on their own the electricity and supply to the people so it is an absolute necessary that all these department the last one which i have been talking is the ministry of planning in fact the central disaster management authority comes under ministry of planning okay so the ministry of planning has to plan it properly in allocating funds to these various organizations and all the stakeholders they have to cooperate and create a proper disaster reduction recovery plan unless they have a mitigation plan properly you cannot all this without support of all these departments even one department does not cooperate or they say they don't have funds or resources or human resources system will not be fulfilled properly so it is absolutely necessary that they have to be part of this recovery plans next slide. well um, suppose if there are bhuj earth quite kind of things have come the state government needed something like something like 20 to 25000 crores where from they will get it the central government uh, disaster management authority will say okay we'll pay you 6000 8000 crores rest of the money will the state government create generate themselves no it's not possible so the central government has to create new policies new things for example after the aftermath of bhuj earthquake that is the only example which i remember very regularly there was an additional income tax was cal- collected from the people who are paying a high tax brackets they have been 10% surcharge was cal- was calculated on their tax amount and that was added as their tax and that money was going to the bhuj earthquake victims so or they have to ask the imf international monetary fund world bank and all these organizations they have to go there and get that this this is a part of human resources development so you have to pay me the money they have to give a proper plan and they have to create some kind of a very solid project to work out and get this relief funds just like central government uh, disaster management authority comes under the uh, central uh, planning department the state planning owns this particular state disaster management authority i'm repeating this words this slide may be you may be feeling that is it's being repeated but they are the authorities they are going to be the funds may come but it has to go to the people the people have to utilize those fund for their disaster risk recovery and response for that the state the sdma has all powers to risk reduction of the state they are the own sole authority for this entire we talked about what is disaster cycle what is disaster mitigation what is it drr and who are all the important people who are going to work on it and what is their role like community panchayat raj state disaster management authority district cell central government authority even the planning departments allied departments when you look at it 
with all these things one important point which you have to understand that disaster response and recovery will be a collective effort of federal uh, local and people's community that is what is the most important thing it is an integral work it is not an independent work okay there may be a diversity of rules and regulations but everybody has to be integrated to prevent it but at the end of the day are we very happy with the recovery and response no that is not the story the story ends like this you have to have disaster prevention that is the most important thing create a wonderful action plan implement it properly word to word line to line implement it and then be happy when the disaster comes you will not be having losses and the entire community will be happy state government will be happy the federal government will not lose money that money can be utilized for some other infrastructure as on today we are spending about 11% of our entire economy is spending money on the disaster which can be reduced by prevention activities thank you